folks, uh, I would like to do a sequence of uh, 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 video tutorials for uh, doing elementary dynamics in the TLB file. If you look at the channel that uh, has posted these uh, finite element stuff in it, uh, just about all of them are dealing with static FEA. Okay, so uh, I would like to uh, do a few on uh, how to do uh, a dynamic syncatia, except that this first one is does not involve using the CATIA program at all. Uh, it's just the fundamentals and some of the limitations and some of the things that you have to watch out, subtle issues that you have to watch out when you do dynamics. Uh, so uh, let me uh, start. Uh, okay. Well, we know that CATIA is uh, marketed by the SAS system, which is a French company headquartered. It's a, it's a multinational, but headquartered in, the, in, in France, and it's about 50 years old. And uh, uh, the inside of the CATIA program, there is a limited version of a program called Alfini. So the solver for CATIA v5 is the Alfini program, and Alfini uh, is the uh, it stands for element fini, which is the translation. The translation in English is finite elements, but it's a limited version of it. Okay, uh, it is based, at least the one that is uh, put in the CATIA program, is based on the concept of modal superposition and Duhamel integral. Now, uh, what I suggest, if you do not know what these things mean, look at a, an elementary vibrations book and the first. Uh, a few chapters, maybe two, three chapters, these are all discussed. Now, most of us would probably know what mode is or superposition is, but you may not have heard of Duhamel integral. Okay, so as soon as you say superposition, that means the problem has to be linear. Okay, forget about contact, forget about material nonlinearities, whether it's elasticity or plasticity, those are all down the tube. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, so basically, CATIA, CATIA program does linear dynamics for us, okay? Now, I would like to say a few words about the, the, the usage of term dynamic and statics because that's still a, a not quite clear in the mind of many uh, students. All right, so here's the situation. Suppose we have a mass and spring, and there could be a damper there, but presently I'm, not, I'm ignoring that. This is called a mass spring system and is subjected to a, to a load a load that may vary with time. Now, first of all, if the load is not there, then, and you move the mass to the right, for example, or to the left, and just let it go, this starts to move back and forth under uh, no external load. So there is a motion, but there's no external load acting on it. This is called free vibration. Now, the, the, the frequency of this vibration or the natural frequency of the vibration is given here as root of k over m. Okay, the, the unit of this is uh, radians per second. So if you divide it by 2 pi, you're going to get the unit of it in hertz. If you flip that hertz, you're going to get the period of oscillation. So the period of oscillation t, big T, is 2 pi root of m over k. Just remember this. Now, suppose we apply a load. The load is now for example, distributed like this. Even if you're interested to apply a, even if you're interested to apply a, a constant load there, it's acting, a constant load is acting, acting to that. For example, imagine that this is, uh, uh, this is uh, inverted, inverted hanging is a mass and spring hanging from the ceiling, and then you let let the mass go due to the constant force of the gravity, which is mass times g. This is going to go. It's going to oscillate. Now, is this problem static or dynamic? The question, well, first of all, this magic force cannot be created in no time. Okay? Uh, the force starts at level zero, and it will build it up to perhaps a constant value. So this is called a transient problem. Obviously, things will change with time, because when you start to build up a load from zero to 10 newtons, for example, or 10 pounds, then things are changing with time. The force is changing with time. It's not constant. So uh, any real world problem is always transient. However, it may not be dynamic. It may be more appropriate to look at it as a static problem. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes people refer to that as quasi-static too. No, 
Let's think about that for a second. The equation of motion for this for this mass spring system, and if there was a damper, is given right here, Newton's second law. Now, if x double dot or x dot is very small and x double dot is very small, for example, if I build this up very slowly, velocity is very slow, velocity is very small, so x dot is very small. And of course, velocity is constant, acceleration is zero. Okay? If these two terms, x double dot and x dot are zero, then the equation basically reduces it to kx equal to f of t. This is not what we call the dynamic problem. This is what we call the, the transient problem. Because if you give me an instant and the load level at that instant, I can plug it in the right-hand side and find the displacement x. If you change the load level at a later time, you get a different value. I can still try and change, solve a k of x equal to that load level and get the displacement. Uh, on the other hand, if these are not negligible, if these two are not negligible, you have to solve a differential equation. Let me give you in the context, give, give this thing to you in the context of an example. I selected an M and a K, I don't remember what they are, but uh, uh, the, the, the value of uh, this, this, this bracket that you see here is the value of uh, the frequency or the, the, the period of natural uh, uh, vibration, okay? If I take the load if I take this T naught six times that, in other words, slowly compared to this T, big T, build up the load level, you can see that things, this is displacement, of course they're changing with respect to time. Okay? However, you can imagine that, you know, basically uh, this is a straight line and that's a straight line, obviously. Okay? On the other hand, if I take the load level to reach its final value, at half this period, you can see that the problem becomes immediately dynamic. If you gave me the load, uh, the, the time, I cannot tell you what the uh, the displacement is unless until unless I actually went and solved this differential equation. Okay, so it's the same problem, same load structure, except that in one case you can treat it as a static problem. In the other case, you can treat it as dynamic problem. I want to say a few more words about this business of uh, uh, modal superposition now. Let us take that same problem, except that I have damper here. Here's the equation of motion, which is second law. I can divide by m. This is very common in, in, in dynamics and vibration. People non, uh, well, uh, simplify the equation by dividing by m. Okay, And if you divide by m, uh, this omega n is exactly what we had before, root of k over m, and this psi is the ratio of the given psi over some 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 constant number called critical damping. This is called damping ratio. Now, here's my omega n that we had before, and uh, because this is a because this is there is a damper present here, the the the, the vibration uh, frequency is slightly modified. It's going to be omega n times root of 1 minus psi squared. If there's a very light damping, of course, psi is small, square root, of, square, root of, square of it is even smaller, and of course, you get something very close to omega n. If there is no damping, the psi is going to be zero, and of course, the damped vibration is going to be same as free vibration. Now, this is what I mean by the Hamel integral. So if you gave me the expression for s, the force that you applied, the way you applied it, I can stick it in that integral and work it out. Now, this H is called the uh, the um, uh, impulse response uh, uh, function, okay? response function. Okay, so uh, this is the Hamel integral. Okay, now if we have a multi-degree of freedom system then I don't have a single natural frequency, I have a multitude of frequencies, okay? So this all becomes a matrix equation. There's not a single x, there's x1, x2, x3, these are all modal. These are all vibrations of different masses. So this becomes a, a matrix equation. And the, uh, the, uh, the, eigen, the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues of this matrix, m inverse k, are gonna be your uh, natural frequencies, there is, and there's not a single one of them. And of course, the concept of the Hamel integral is going to be uh, exactly the same. 
I'll let you go ahead and look at some vibration book to find the details, okay? Now, when you go to Katia and you want to do analysis, you have this option. You can do static, you can do frequency, and there's a bunch of the, the, the ones that deal with uh, dynamics are, well, because it's modal superposition, based on modal superposition, the first thing you have to do is to find a natural frequency. You have to do this regardless. And then it's one of these two cases. This is what we call transient dynamics, and this is a harmonic response. That means a steady state response due to harmonic load. Never mind about this for now. What I, what I talked about in this, in this uh, uh, video, a short video segment is actually transient uh, response. It was not harmonic response, okay? Now, it's strongly suggested that you also do static case first. First do a static case, sort out all the possible errors that may come up. I mean, maybe you forgot the restraint, maybe you forgot the, the load, the load was not, you know, right, etc. So it will reveal itself to any errors that you may have made. And then you do a frequency response, frequency case, and then you do a transient dynamic. So this is not, this is optional, but I strongly suggest that you do it, and uh, because it's a lot cheaper to do a static case than finding frequencies and then eventually doing the Duhamel integral. Uh, by the way, uh, some dynamics, some packages, even do the dynamics, uh, uh, linear dynamics based on time integration, uh, the concept of time integration, integration in time. Uh, but when you do Duhamel integral, uh, uh, that integration is not uh, is not involved, so uh, uh, th there's no pos there's no potential of uh, instabilities and things like that. Okay. All right. The next video is going to be uh, something that involves uh, uh, using Katia.